In this video I will tell you all you need to know about installing a quad carb setup from a sports bike to a Honda Civic D series engine. Some time ago I posted a short video of this setup running and it seems to me that you guys are interested in it. But before we even start I'd like to point out that this combination doesn't give you some crazy numbers on the dyno. So if you are into that you can just keep searching for something else. What it does give you however is the rapid throttle response an amazing soundtrack. It also looks great, if done right. It's possible to have a bike carb conversion running in just about any car, but it's much easier if that car came equipped with the carbs from the factory, because that guarantees two things, that the ignition timing is mechanically tunable and that you have a low pressure mechanical fuel pump. There are two types of these series engines that came with the carbs from the factory, as far as I know. Dual carb CV that was equipped in a D14A1 engine and a single carb in a D13B2. I live in Europe, therefore I'm familiar with these engines, but they were sold in other parts of the world as well. For example, these dual carbs were common in Australia and New Zealand. What matters here is the fact that these engines have a distributor with vacuum valve installed on them. This distributor is most likely Hitachi D4 and you'll want to keep it in a good shape. Theoretically, this conversion can be done with no vacuum advance, but it will affect your fuel consumption and efficiency. So it all depends whether you're going to be using this car for a daily driver or a racetrack. For those of you with EFI cars wondering about doing this conversion, well, it's possible, but I'm not an expert in that field. So this video is carb to carb conversion specifically. But stick around, all the things I'm going to be talking about still apply to EFI. Let's go through a list of the parts you need to make this work. Obviously, there are the bike carbs. But there's something I'll put before that. The intake manifold. This is really a critical part. Get it right or don't do it. I TIG welded mine using a D13B2 flange plate and a 40mm OD aluminum pipe. It was very time consuming and stupid thing to do, since this flange plate doesn't match the head ports at all. Later I found out that the D14A1 plate matches the head perfectly. I also found out that there's a company in England that makes this stuff beautifully. They are called Dan ST Engineering and this is not sponsored by them unfortunately. Not only you can find flange plate there, you can find complete manifolds, joint hoses, vacuum bars and even the entire sets for this conversion. If you decide to buy a finished manifold this is a place to go. But before buying it you have to know which carbs you're gonna be using since they are all spaced differently. Yamahas are 72mm apart, Hondas are 75 and Suzuki is 80mm. Other than that, there is nothing to worry about. Any D-series head can accept any of these manifolds, because in the D-series bore of the cylinder is always 70. Because in the D-series the bore of the cylinder is always the same, it's always 75mm. No matter is it a D12 engine or D17. The angle of the intake runners is about 30 degrees to compensate for the angle of the float balls to make them sit like they do on a bike. So if you are still planning to weld this yourself, keep in mind that you have two angles to worry about on each runner. The length of the runners matters as well. And there are some online calculators available that can help you determine the ideal length for your engine. That depends on the targeted RPM and cam's profile. General rule, the shorter the runner, higher the RPM. However, there's not much space under the bonnet, especially if you use some sort of an airbox, which I strongly advise you to do. So you'll probably end up with a high revving friendly setup. This length is the distance between the throttle's butterfly and the intake well, not just the manifold. Keep that in mind. And the last thing about manifolds is the diameter of the intake runner. Of course, you want it to match your carb's butterfly. If you get a 600cc setup, it will be 36 or 37 millimeters. And if you get a 1000cc setup, it can go up to 40. But I don't think it's necessary for these engines, at least not for road use. If you look back at this online calculator, you can notice the correlation between the RPM and the diameter. As always, there's a win some, lose some principle applied here. And if you tune the car for very high RPMs, you will inevitably lose some drivability at the low end. So it's all up to you and your preferences. Let's move to carbs. Find them somewhere cheap and completely restore them. 
Learn each and every part of them and its function. Buy a set of pilot and main jets to fine tune them. Buy new needle jets and float ball gaskets. And most importantly, buy a JIS screwdriver number two. Because you will destroy all the screw heads otherwise with standard Phillips screwdriver. If you want, you can replace all those screws with Allen key ones. Since most of the original screws are gonna be butchered by people unaware of JIS screws. If you don't want to be bothered with this step, go back to Dan ST Engineering and order yourself a pre-prepared set of carbs. But doing this yourself really helps understanding the principles of carburetors and it will help you in later stages of tuning. Once you got the carbs and the manifold, you'll need some hoses to join the two parts. There won't be much luck in using the hoses you got with the carbs as they are made specifically for the bike, plus it's a 20 plus year old rubber, so it won't work. Just check the outside diameter of the runner and carb and find something adequate and some clamps. You'll also need a new intake manifold gasket. Don't reuse the old one ever, it's cheap. There you have the codes. I skipped the vacuum story when we discussed manifolds, so here it goes. There are two schools of thought. First one says that one vacuum port is enough to feed the brake booster and the distributor's advancing valve. And the second one says that the each cylinder runner needs to be drilled and the vacuum has to be sent to an equalizing bar and from there to a destination. Otherwise the signal will be pulsating and it's not good. I don't know which statement is true, but since I removed close to a million vacuum hoses that were originally on there, it seemed fair to return at least six of them back. A cheap eBay device did the job perfectly. It's surprisingly well built. The picture tells it all. Four runners enter the bar, one big port is for the brake servo and the other one is for the timing advance. To set this advance, you'll have to remove the vacuum pump from the Hitachi distributor and try sucking air in with the hose attached to one of the two ports. The one that makes the rod more inwards is the one you need and I don't remember which one of them is it. The other port can just be left open. The next thing to worry about is a fuel line and two cables, throttle and choke. Assuming that you have an OEM mechanical fuel pump, which is just fine for this conversion, this will be a pretty easy task. All you need is a 20 or 30 centimeters of flexible fuel hose with the eight millimeter inner diameter and you're good to go. Luckily, this bike carbs came with only one inlet. Throttle cable should fit right away as well. At least mine did. I'm not sure what type of cable the Suzuki and Yamaha use on their carburetors. I'm talking about the original car's cable. You don't even have to remove it. All you need to do is to make a bracket for the cable. I fixed it on an airbox and it was fine. The only slight problem was the fact that it's a bit too long now because it doesn't go around the front of an engine like it did before. Similar thing goes for the choke cable, only this one doesn't fit so perfectly and it's a bit trickier to make a bracket. I never done a final version of this, but it functioned. And the last thing to discuss is the air filtering. This topic is pretty well covered here on YouTube and I don't feel like I have something new to add here. Basically, you have three options. You can leave the velocity stacks open, which is pretty tempting and it leaves you with a decent headroom for longer intake runners. Or you can put on some mushroom filters or cone filters, however you wanna call them. But you have to know that these ones are also very difficult to tune. Or you can design a proper air box. It's all up to you. I know this wasn't the most entertaining video, but I hope it covered most of the stuff needed for this conversion. I didn't go into details about tuning the carbs. It deserves a new video. But I'd like to know your settings, jet sizes, carb types and so on. Thanks for watching and I hope that this video helps someone.